Welcome to the first episode of uh, Harald Feinherr's saga, the third saga of uh, Heimskringla and uh, the saga of the first king of all of Norway. For those who haven't read these sagas before, Harald Feinherr is generally attributed to be the first king uh, of uh, all of Norway. Uh, anyway, the first king of historical Norway. Harald Feinherr is the son of uh, Harald the Black, the second son. Uh, the first one died uh, of illness. And um, the do- son of uh, uh, Queen Ragnhild, the second Queen Ragnhild. Today I'm uh, on the east coast of uh, Jutland, uh, out, uh, just outside a small city, beautiful city called Ebeltoft. And behind me is quite a special island, right behind there. This is a uh, Yelm, uh, this island. It's uh, uh, Yelm is, means helmet. And it's uh, uh, the island of the infamous uh, nobleman and uh, warrior Stig Andersen Vide, also, also called Marsk Stig. And um, he was uh, infamously involved in uh, murdering the Danish king. This was in the late 1200s. And uh, waging war on the, uh, on the, on the powers, in uh, the royal powers in Denmark. He fled to Norway and uh, under the son of uh, Magnus Lawgiver, Eirik Magnusson, he uh, led several campaigns uh, plundering and burning down on the east coast of Denmark. He eventually set up his own a stronghold here, having weakened the forces in Denmark. He set up a stronghold here and uh, had a small castle for his forces based out of this island and even had uh, minted their own uh, currency there. So quite an exciting history. This part of uh, the east coast is also kind of the right uh, south of here is the portal into the bay of Ebeltoft and then the big bay of uh, Aarhus. Uh, so uh, he would uh, being situated there, he would have controlled, uh, have had control of quite a lot of the Danish, of an, an important Danish um, uh, tradeway. Because uh, going north from here, the next, uh, uh, then you have the next two big fjords, uh, or the Gudnon, Rannesfjorn, going into Rannes, and the Gudnon, north, uh, f- uh, off uh, the north part of. Uh, Djursland, which this area is called. And then, of course, the next is uh, Limfjorn. And Limfjorn was a major, uh, major uh, trade area, important strategically. So by controlling here, he's, he's actually crippled a lot of uh, Danish trade between the north and the south of the kingdom. Anyway, this uh, episode is more about uh, Harald Feinherr, um, uh, Harald Halftansson, and uh, I'll be reading my translation as usual. Two chapters this time. The chapters get longer now with uh, the sagas as they come, and uh, some commentary where this where it's necessary. Harald Feinherr's Saga. Harald battles with Hake and Gandalf, his father. King Harald took the kingdom after his father. He was ten winters old at the time. He was larger, stronger and fairer than other men. He was a wise and active man. Guttorm, his mother brother. And uh, like I mentioned in my commentary to Ynglinga Saga, I'm using 
not uncle, but the Norse and Scandinavian way of saying uncle, uh, at least in Denmark and, and Sweden. Uh, because it's more precise, so we see the family relation instead of just uncle, which can be, you know, the brother of the mother or the brother of the father. Guttorm, his mother brother, was made head of the Hird and all the dealings of the lands, as well as the general of the army. After the death of Halfdan the Black, many chieftains went against the lands he had held. And the first one was King Gandalf and the brothers Högne and Frode, the sons of King Øystein of Hedmark. And Högne Kåreson campaigned all over Ringerike. So basically the foe through generations, families that uh, all, all the way back to Halfdan Whiteleg, that his Halfdan Whiteleg's family, which uh, Halfdan Fein, uh, Harald Fein here is a descendant of, their uh, hereditary enemies in Vingulmark, Hedmark and Ringrike return with a vengeance when Halfdan the Black dies. Then Hake Gandalfsson moved on Vestfold with 300 men and went through some valleys in the highlands with the idea of approaching King Harrel unnoticed. In the meantime, King Gandalf sat in his lands with his army and prepared there to move his army over the fjord towards Vestfold. So Gandalf and Hake Gandalfsson, they were based in uh, Ranarike or Alfheim on the other side of the, on the eastern side of the Oslo fjord, going all the way down to modern day uh, Göteborg and Göteilv, which at that time was called Raumailv. <clears throat> when General Guttorm heard word of this, he gathered their army and went with King Harald, turning first in country towards Hake. They met in a valley, and there was a battle, and King Harald held the field. There fell King Hake and a large portion of his army. This place has since been called Hakadal. And uh, it's still called that in, you, when you go uh, north, if you go north from Oslo towards um, uh, Hadeland, then you pass through Hakadal. After this, King Harald and General Guttorm turned back. In the meantime, King Gandalf had arrived in Vestfold, and they now set a course towards each other. And when they met, there was a fierce battle. There fled Gandalf, losing most of his army, and thus made his way back to his kingdom. That would be his kingdom in uh, Alfheim. And when the sons of King Eystein of Hedmark heard this, they expected an army coming soon. They sent word to Högne Kåreson and uh, Gubran Hersche and set a meeting with them at Ringsaker in Hedmark. So these last Högne Kåreson, he uh, was uh, fighting in Ringerike. Gudbrand Hersche, he was on the uh, 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 Hersche or a small king out of uh, Gubranstalen and probably controlled uh, the uplands north and uh, west of Mjösa, north of what today is Bidi, because Bidi would have been part of the Ringsaker area at that time, so part of Hedmark. Um, and uh, south of Bidi you come into Jövik and Toten, which was part of uh, Hadland. So uh, Gubran Hersche, he's, uh, he would be ruling the west and north part of what is generally called Upland today. Uh, Ringsaker is uh, on the east side of um, uh, Lake Mjösa, just south of what today is Moelv. And, uh, and there are rich farm areas in this area, both on both sides of uh, uh, Mjösa there, and there's always been a close connection. Uh, on both sides of Mjösa. So if you see like m medieval reconstructional maps of what Hedmark was at that time, it kind of bites in to the west side of uh, Lake Mjösa, where Bidi is, and uh, includes that in Hedmark, while later in modern times uh, this has been generally... People today uh, see B the, everything west on the west side of Lake Mjösa as uh, Upland. But at that time, that part was close, more close connected to uh, the east side. Uh, 
you can actually, I don't know if that's just a coincidence, but it's interesting to see the dialects in this area because uh, the dialects of um, uh, Halftan White Legs areas, which would be Ringsaker and Hedmark, and going south towards Toten and Hadland. All these uh, dialects, for example, um, uh, they say "ye" yeah for me, which in uh, like standardized Norwegian bokmål is "jeg," and in uh, Nynorsk, which is more based off the West Coast dialects, it's "egg." Here in these areas, they say "ye," yeah. and uh, for n- not a denial, you would say um, in bokmål "ikke." And in the west coast uh, Norwegian Ishe, and also if you come in uh, north in uh, Gubbranstalen and uh, into Valdres, you also say Ishe. But in uh, these areas, you say Itte. So there's a much closer affinity to Swedish, and the border is quite uh, biri. You still say Ye and Itte, but once you get north of Lillehammer, this starts dropping off, and. Um, so if this has any connection with, because of course Hofton Whiteleg was a Swedish influx into Norway. And I don't know, it's hard, impossible to say how the dialects were at that time, but it's a curious coincidence that the traditional areas of the Inglinga, um, if you follow their path into Norway, the dialects in this area, where they had their power base for hundreds of years, the dialects of these areas have a much more affinity with Swedish dialects than uh, when you come east, north, no, west, north and south of these areas. Ye and Itte is only for Toten, Hadland uh, and uh, Hedmark and uh, and uh, going up to Biri. It dip- disappears further north. Anyway, King Harald conquers five chieftains. After these battles, King Harald and King Guttorm went with all the forces they could gather, turning towards Opland and traveling mostly through the forests. They heard news of where the Opland kings had held their meeting and came upon that place during midnight. And the guards didn't notice anything until the army had advanced all the way up to the house where Hengna Koreson was and the house where Gudbrand was sleeping. And they set fire to both buildings. Eystein's sons came rushing out with their men and fought for a while, and there fell both Hungne and Frode. After these four chieftains had fallen, King Harald claimed Ringrike, Gubranstal and Hadland, Toten and Remarike, and all of the northern part of Vingulmark. After that, King Harald and General Guttorm had strife with King Gandalf, and the end of that was that King Gandalf fell in the battle while King Harald laid claim to everything south until Raumariver. So in one fell swoop almost, King Harald reclaims with his evidently very capable uh, general Guttorm, he reclaims all of the lands in the east of Norway um, that uh, uh, Halfdan the Black held and before him Halfdan Whiteleg, adding to that Gubranstal, which they never held, and uh, all of uh, Alfheim and the rest of uh, Vingulmark. Because when Al- Al- Alfheim falls with King Gandalf in the end of that chapter, then also falls the southern part of Vingulmark, which isn't mentioned specifically, but they held that part of Vingulmark as well. So, uh, and this area uh, their family had not held either. Halfed on the white leg, he went around the gouts and the Alf, uh, 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 the, 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 the gout areas in Sweden and uh, the Alfheim and uh, up to Solør and in that way to Hedmark and Upland. So they never held uh, all of Alfheim and Rana, Ranarike. So uh, King Harald has basically consol- consol- consolidated all of eastern Norway including Vestfold, uh, in, uh, in this uh, uh, action at Ringsaker. There's a, also at Ringsaker, there's some really beautiful ruins of uh, an old cathedral. And there, um, 
well kept. So it's really a, an interesting place to uh, to visit this uh, area. Yeah, those were the two first chapters of uh, King Harald Feinherr's uh, uh, saga, which is a saga filled with filled with conquest and battle. And he starts out with a sprint with these actions in uh, Opland. Um, if you have any comments or uh, anything, please, uh, any questions, anything you would disagree with in my translations or anything, please leave a comment. Uh, I always answer the comments. And um, again, just a reminder of the genealogy, which is now finished for Inglinga Saga and Hoft on the Black Saga and continuing into Harald Feinherr's Saga. It's a really good supplement to reading these and, uh, sagas. And uh, so there's a link in the description to the, the genealogy I'm compiling. And it's very strict. It follows Nure without making any corrections. So uh, that's that. And uh, hope you join me for another video. Uh, and see you soon.